Small size, a very small size. Here in Japan, but generally people do not come up to you to ask you for money. We'll go for sushi. And then depending on how special that day is, the rank can change. Many things here in Japan are handled very, very old school. They don't really check your ID as much. If that was true, I would be sitting in the log right now. Number one. She's so confusing. Hey guys and gals, I'm Ash Venice. It's Kathy Cat coming from Tokyo straight out to you. This time we're gonna talk about top surprises that we get when we come to Japan. So let's go find out what they are and maybe learn one or two things. Let's go! We're gonna count down from seven. So let's start with number seven. America has super size, Japan is mini size. Simple products that you might know for a certain size are actually a lot smaller in Japan. So for example, Hagen Dutz is actually, you know, small and petite, kind of cute. And that's not the, the big packs with the single sales. No, this is actually single sale. So get a tiny little portion here. It's like 110 milliliters for one of them. And they're expensive, I tell you. But that's not the only thing. For example, foreign products like Budweiser you might be able to find here in Japan. They might be a little bit more expensive. But what you generally don't find are the big sizes, the family packs, the big portions and similar. So they might sell them at Costco, but then you need a member's card. So for example, looking at this Budweiser here, we found actually something different. Like I told you, for everything in Japan, there seems to be a super size, like a super beer size and similar things like that. When we interviewed people here on the streets of Tokyo, many Japanese people said they cannot finish Western portions. So when they travel to Hawaii, America and similar, they generally can only eat half the plate or maybe one fourth or they share it with friends because Japanese people are not used to the same super sizes, big portions as such. Of course, there are a couple of places that sell them, but generally they are not as easily available. So yeah, small size over super size. There is a broad variety of miniature items here in Japan and miniature foods. And there's even miniature little food stores and candy stores you can eat or play with. There's a great variety and you can find those just by going into a normal supermarket. But if you think about it, even though the size is different, in the UK they call it fun size, kind of smaller, the flavor doesn't change. So, you know, it's still just as tasty. There is said to be another reason why these ones are so small. So for example, if a salaryman on his way home wants to have like the odd little beer and maybe buys it at the convenience store just before he leaves work. So <laughs> he has the chance to just put this into his pocket and it won't show that he already has prepared for his afternoon. Or similar things in Japan, many people here in Tokyo have to actually carry the items. Many people don't own a car. So you think of how much do you have to carry and small sizes come in much more handy. A lot of people live as singles here in Tokyo as well so buying in bulk isn't really an option for them so they get themselves smaller portions and you know enjoy the, the tiny good things in life N -E -X -T. number six people on the streets don't ask you for money Having been to Berlin, and maybe it's the same in some of your countries, I've seen it all. People come on the train to play music and then they want cash. People just walk up to you on the train and want cash. The people who play music on the streets and then go around open up their hats, you don't even get that. Some people put their hats down here in Japan, but generally people do not come up to you to ask you for money. No, there's not even the odd punk who comes and says, Hey, hast du mal mark? Which means, hey, you got a coin? I guess. So those kind of things, Japanese people do not approach strangers and ask them for cash. And that's kind of, you know, kind of good. Sometimes when I, mean, I saw people playing music on the streets, I thought there would be a hat to put coins into to, you know, praise them for their good work. Some people don't even ask for that. Some just play music for recognition and some just play music to sell their albums. And yeah, surprising. I'll still try and treat some of the musicians when I see them to a little bit uh, of extra change. But generally, it's really nice and relieving that people do not force you to give them money straight away. If someone comes up on the street and asks you for cash, be really aware of that. You don't really do that in Japan. It's not a common thing. And they might just take advantage of the fact that you are a foreigner. So yeah, generally it doesn't happen though. 
Number five, sushi has two faces. Now, abroad in Germany, I used to think that sushi is very commonly eaten in Japan, and that is true and also not true at the same time. Now, you can get sushi almost everywhere here in supermarkets, in convenience stores. You can like go around and pretty much is like at a corner store, you can get sushi, but there's a difference in the quality of sushi and there's also a difference when people eat it. Now, sushi seems to be more of a special meal still, like a celebration. So, for example, when someone's graduating school or when something good has happened in someone's life or as a treat, people go for sushi. And then depending on how special that day is, the rank can change from a, uh, you know, kaiten sushi, one of those runaround sushi places, up to the high class sushi master places, really depending on the situation. So for example, if the boyfriend comes to the house of the parents for the first time, that might be a situation where they bring out the sushi to just impress him a little bit and, you know, give him a treat. Or, for example, graduation or entry of school ceremonies, or just if you pass the test and, you know, it's a little treat. So, it's commonly available and you can get it everywhere. And at the same time, it's still something special. And then again, think of the price margin. So, yeah, it's both. By the way, Japanese people do not eat sushi every day. That is a myth. That is totally wrong. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> Number four, Japan is not as technologically, technolo technologically, technologically advanced. Okay. Number four, Japan is not as technologically advanced as we think. Now, abroad, we have the image of Japan, you know, the high-tech city, everything is so futuristic. They got robots here. They got robot cafes here. This must be the future. Yeah. Now, many things here in Japan are handled very, very old school. For example, many banks will still give you a bank book with a little booklet on which little things get printed instead of a credit card or maybe together with your credit card. Also, big problem here in 2020 was realized that most of the corona cases got actually faxed two places and then the facts got lost or the faxes weren't accurate or they weren't coming through and that caused a lot of issues. So many things Japan seems to be very forward, but actually quite a lot of things are surprisingly still in the old days. So teleworking right now or working from home is a relatively new idea for many companies. But However, in 2020, many Japanese companies and also the government have realized that these methods are so old and totally outdated. So, for example, in Japan, you used to have a little stamp or you still have to have a little stamp which replaces your signature. Now, you have to usually, if you want to have a document, get like many people to stamp that document with their signature. It's very physical. You can't do it digitally. And that is one of the things that is probably going to get changed soon because Japan realized that's a bit outdated. It kind of puts us into trouble, especially in 2020. So there hopefully will be some positive technological changes here soon. <laughs> Number three, many things are left to your own discretion as adult. There are some really harsh punishments set into place for minors who go drinking and for the adults who might be enabling them to drink. The legal drinking age in Japan is 20. Now, for example, I heard that, you know, a male idol lost his job in the idol industry because he was drinking before he was 20 years old and the adult that was hit with him to kind of, you know, she encouraged him apparently to drink, got into a lot of trouble too. Yet, still, what surprised me, if you go to a convenience store in Japan, they don't really check your ID as much. Uh, in a way, there is usually a window that pops up on a screen where you have to, by yourself, in your own discretion, push the button that says, I confirm that I am 20 years old, which takes away the whole arguing that you sometimes get with ease, your ID and how do you look, or people going, what do I look like? I'm that young, I'm already in my 50s, but you don't, get that here. There's a plus and a minus to that because how do you check? But it seems like not that many people are abusing this system. However, what I find surprising is when you want to buy tobacco, there is a certain ID that you need to have in order to buy it. But it's not there for alcohol. I am so confused. 
Number two, Japanese food is healthy, or is it? Yes, yes, Japanese food is so healthy with all the vegetables, the less oil, the fish, and the rice. So healthy, so healthy, you will never gain weight.、Mm. If that was true, I would be skinny as a log right now. No, this is not how this works. Japanese girls who are skinny, they put in a lot of effort. If you watch some of our interviews, you know all the girls have been saying, no, I try my hardest to diet all the bloody time. No, <laughs> Japanese food, of course, it might be healthy on some aspects. But other types of food are actually very, very fatty. So, for example, yes, tempura is great because it is fried vegetables, but they are battered and literally deep fried. Or Japanese wagyu, the prime beef that they have here, is actually so prime and so special because it is marbled with fat. The Japanese cuisine has its own thick sauces, uses of fat, and similar things like that. That can actually, you know, add a little bit to the weight. And then there's snacks and there's ice cream. And oh my gosh, have you even tried some of those cakes? They're like so small and so incredible. They have so much detail and it's so hard. It's so hard. It's so tasty. Well, Japanese rice and such might be a little bit healthier than, you know, fried potatoes or similar things like that, but you still have to limit your intake of certain foods a little bit. Just to be careful, I must say, some of the foods here are so good that I used to eat even more than everyone in my host family combined when I was here as a student. So, <laughs> if food is tasty and some things might not be as fatty, but still, still, it's not the. All of it is the healthiest food. I think that's just like a, that's a rumor. But yeah, it's just so, yeah, it's so tasty. Oh my god, I'm hungry now. <sighs> Number one, useful. The most reliable in the world, and yet she's so confusing. Yes, you might have guessed it already. Most of the foreigners that we interviewed on the streets of Tokyo said they are very positively surprised by the Japanese trains. Now, there's just one big catch. Yes, they're more reliable. Yes, there are a lot of trains. But oh my god, is the system confusing? If you've been to Tokyo, their map of all the different types of trains is like a spider web. And I feel like a butterfly in all of it, trying to helplessly find my way around it. And that's also the same for Japanese people. You can get terribly lost at the big stations that are connected to another station. Then there is like JR, but that's a different Japan railway. That's different again from the metro, which has a different name, which is then different again to all the pre- Private train lines that are in Tokyo. And don't even get me started on the types of trains that can go on the same platform. There's a local one that stops at every milk can, then there is a semi express, which is a bit faster, then there's a super express, a rapid express, and then maybe a liner special super bomba bomba jetty train. Seriously. And they all On the same platform. You go on the wrong one and you either take an hour longer or you totally go past your step. It's confusing. Yet, little by little, I learned the tricks of how to make it there. My hand, is, my big hint is get yourself an app. Usually, the apps will tell you on which platform what train leaves, and it will also calculate where you have to change trains in order to make it on time to the location you want to go to. My pro tip also, if you walk here in Japan, is always try and leave 30 minutes earlier. Be there 30 minutes earlier. Check everything in advance because even with the apps, you might be going to the right place, station, and platform, and then you might get lost inside the stations because the stations can sometimes be very confusing. So give yourself a little bit of extra time when you really want to be on time. Told you, Japanese people love being on time. And then you can master the Japanese train. Living here in Tokyo for over six years now, I can tell you almost every day has a little surprise in for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's more I would like to share with you, so hopefully, you have subscribed so we can chat a little bit more about things here in Japan. And don't forget to leave us a like to say thanks for making this video, Kathy Cat and director. And I'll catch you soon for more videos here on Ash Japanese. Thanks for checking in. See you soon. Bye.